hundreds of Afghans running alongside and trying to grab onto a U.S. Air Force jet as it attempted to take off. At least three people died after falling to their deaths while clinging on to a U.S. plane. Another died on the tarmac. Afghans stormed Kabul's airport in a desperate attempt to flee the country following the Taliban's ability to control or take control of the capital, Kabul, over the weekend. This follows the US troop withdrawal after 20 years in this war, this forever war in Afghanistan has finally come to an end. Now, there were some awful and pathetic takes in regard to the US troop withdrawal, which we'll get to a little later in this segment. So hold before we get to that. But first, a little bit of context for you. President Ashraf Ghani fled the country as the insurgents entered Kabul on Sunday. Taliban leaders ensconced themselves in the palace only hours after Ghani fled, taking control over what was once one of the most secure locations in the country. And you know, just before the weekend, Ghani had alleged that he was going to do whatever it took to fight back against the Taliban and its attempts to take control over Kabul, but apparently he fled and the Taliban was able to gain control of that area. Now, Afghan officials in other cities were filmed handing over power to insurgent leaders. Former President Hamid Karzai said he had formed a council with other political leaders to coordinate a peaceful transition to a new Taliban government. But of course, it hasn't been all that peaceful. There were already several examples of retaliation against officials from the national now, former government of Afghanistan, the government that was propped up by the United States and the troops on the ground there. Previously, President Joe Biden made it appear as though the Taliban would not easily take control of Afghanistan. Here's the statement from July 8th. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well equipped, as well equipped as any army in the world and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. It's kind of incredible just how inevitable it was. There were some suspicions that maybe it would take several months for the Taliban to take control of Afghanistan after US troops left the country. But it's clear that it was only a matter of days that it happened. And now, because there's this desperate attempt to get US allies and remaining US citizens out of the country, the Biden administration is sending thousands of troops back to Afghanistan to help with that specific effort, Cenk. Okay, so uh, there's some ironies here. First of all, Biden's decision to withdraw from Afghanistan is 100% correct. And the first irony is that this debacle proves how correct it was. Turns out we stayed there 20 years and got absolutely nothing done, nothing at all, okay? And what, they take Kabul in three days? <laughs> Let's be honest about the incredible failure of the United States military, the incredible failure of neoconservatives who said that we could turn Afghanistan into a democracy. And this is important, the incredible failure of the defense contractors that we spent trillions of dollars in, in American resources to, who said, "Oh no, oh no, we'll stand up to Afghan army. The Afghan army will be brilliant. Now, now to the Second core issue, first core issue is should we have withdrawn? And now I've got neoconservatives and centrists and conservative Democrats all over the place saying we should have stayed another 20 years. You see this shows if we just stayed another 20 or 200 years, this all would have been fine. Look, they live on a different planet than we do. Okay, but the second core issue is did they screw up the withdrawal? First obvious answer to that is yes, we can see it with our own eyes. But it is more complicated than that. As you can tell, I got no love for defending the establishment Democrats, including Joe Biden, who's part of the Obama administration. But if you're being fair, overall, you'll note two facts. Number one, Biden never agreed with Obama to do a surge in Afghanistan. Another note, side note here, mainstream media, has anybody noted that Obama's surge over a decade ago was a miserable failure? It was just preposterous, it didn't work at all, it was ridiculous, total and utter failure by Obama on that count. 
Now, by the way, Bush started the failure. We're a fair show. We got no need to beat up on Obama, but that is reality. And, and Biden was not in favor of that search. So you have to give him credit for that. Biden asked for, and I've now read enough details to that you don't, you obviously do not trust the Pentagon from the get go, but it appears that they did a bunch of contingency planning, okay? Was their contingency planning good enough? Well, obviously not. Well, you got people falling off of airplanes in a mad, insane scramble at the airport, let alone how quickly the Taliban took over the country. But did they tell Joe Biden that yes, we think we have this withdrawal and all the contingency plans figured out? It appears that they did. So that would be the 28th time or the 280th time that the Pentagon screwed up and is a total debacle. So I'd like to know when the mainstream media is ever going to say, "Oh, by the way, you know who's at fault?" Apparently the idiots at the Pentagon who had 20 years to figure this out and their idiot corrupt friends that are the defense contractors and they never figured out an inch of it. 300,000 in the Afghan government as Biden just said in the Afghan military, they all laid down their weapons immediately. By the way, what happened in Iraq? Something very similar. Why? Because they don't want to fight for us. They just want to take our money for 20 years and then join the Taliban as soon as we can. And by the way, Lockheed Martin and all your other contractors and Pentagon, brilliant job in making them the most well equipped army. Guess what? The Taliban now has all of that equipment. Yeah, that is, that's an excellent point that no one is making. If you watch specifically Jake Tapper's coverage of this, I mean, as someone who presents himself as like this straight news guy, he does quite a bit of editorializing on this particular topic. And he seems to think that this was a massive mistake by the Biden administration. I completely disagree, especially given the fact that when you look at the true objectives of this war, was it really about democracy building? Was yeah, it? Absolutely. Does anyone really buy that? Or was this just another hollow effort? meant to funnel more money, redistribute more taxpayer money to the very private contractors who took in literally a trillion dollars during this war, right? I mean, the reason why this kept going even after Osama bin Laden was assassinated was because you have private contractors who wanted to keep it going and you had Senators and and lawmakers who were receiving campaign donations from these very contractors and essentially carrying out their wishes. This is a failed war because the actual objective was really never about democracy building and there are consequences to that. Look, do I think that this is going to harm Joe Biden politically? If I were to guess, no, I don't think it's gonna harm him. Americans barely care about fellow Americans, I don't think Americans genuinely care about people in Afghanistan. But there are consequences to that, Jenk. Because whenever we have you know, this surge of so-called terrorist activity, American pundits then turn around and say, why do they hate us? Why do they hate us? Do they hate us because of our freedom? Do they hate us because, because of who we are? No, they hate us because of what we do, what our government does in their countries. We have left Afghanistan in absolute turmoil. People are doing what they can to flee, but the US has taken control of the airports there, certainly the airport in Kabul. Kabul. They have canceled all commercial flights, making it impossible for the Afghan people to leave. And they took control of the airports because they want to ensure that US citizens are able to leave safely. Now I wanna go to this next video because it features a young Afghan woman who did manage to flee. She's in India, I believe. And she's talking to the media about what she has on her mind. And I think this is exactly the kind of voice we should think about whenever we consider invading another country to build democracy. Let's watch. I can't believe the world abandoned Afghanistan. (laughs) Our friends are gonna get killed, they're gonna kill us. Our women are not gonna have any more rights. So, I mean, it's a horrible situation for women in Afghanistan. There's no question about that. We we didn't actually prop up or build a real government there. I mean, I just think this was nothing more than an effort to funnel money to defense contractors. And I think yeah. that's pretty clear. 20 years, 20 years they can't build something sustainable. Yeah. Come on. So, a lot to comment on that. Uh, number one, um, the military is not the solution for everything. That's the what the media tells you in this country. That's what all the propaganda says in this country. Uh, you got a problem? Uh, the answer is the United States military and all the defense contractors and a couple of trillion dollars. Well, 
No, if we're being honest about the problem in Afghanistan, and there is a massive problem in Afghanistan from where my perspective, it it's a cultural one. Now, you can get angry at that, and I don't care if you're on the left and oh no, well, we have to respect all cultures. No, we don't. Uh, so that's a fundamentalist culture uh, that, that the Taliban are in that don't give women equal rights. Not even close, not even within a million miles of it. But you're not going to solve that by murdering more of them. You're gonna solve that by changing the culture. Changing the culture is very difficult. It's in some ways more controversial. But one thing we know for sure, and that's very difficult. I'm not saying you can do it easily. And I'm not saying that it can even be done at least in the short term, right? I believe it can be done in the long term. But what makes no sense is let's kill our way out of it. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense at all. That's why the ones that were in the military, the theoretical Afghan military, their culture had not been changed either. That's why they largely agreed with the Taliban. That's why they immediately gave up and handed all of our weaponry to the Taliban. So constantly saying let's bomb, 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 no matter what the solution is, is really, if it was honest, it would be pure idiocy. If we had an honest media in this country, they would have told you how moronic that was decades ago. But the reality is the media is filled with neoconservatives. They love war, they always champion war. Whenever they see a clip like that, we show you the context and we say our heart breaks for her. And the way to do to effectuate change there is cultural. The military, the mainstream media looks at that and goes, aha. If we had stayed another 20 years and killed more Afghan civilians, then her problem would have been solved. That's just not true. And Jake Tapper is a joke, they're all jokes. So look, but we do nuance on the show. On the other hand, the female reporter CNN has on the ground, we're gonna talk more about her a little bit later in the show. One of the bravest reporters I've ever seen, and I give her all the credit in the world, okay? You have to judge case by case. So why do I say Tapper's a joke? I've never seen him disagree with neocons. He's always, a war's always the right option. Oh, why, why didn't Biden do more military? Why didn't Trump do more military? More military, more military. Here, let's bring on generals who are now, by the way, with defense contractors. But we won't tell you that, we'll lie and we'll do propaganda on their behalf, as you always do. And another opportunity they're taking now is, they couldn't wait to both sides it, right? They beat up Trump all those years and they were right to. Now the Biden's in office, they couldn't wait to say, "Oh yeah, look at how fair we are. We'll unfairly criticize Biden too. No, that doesn't make you fair at all. Yeah. You should do honest commentary. And I would believe that you were fair the minute you actually said anything against the establishment. And I've never seen that on cable news. So I see a bunch of liars. Nicole Wallace now is talking about, oh, you know, the American people agree with Joe Biden. Well, that's true. Both the right wing and the left wing agree that we should have left. Now let's remember that Nicole Wallace is the same grifter who helped start the war in Afghanistan Absolutely. and continue it for nearly a decade when she worked as the literal mouthpiece, the spokesperson for George W. Bush. Now we're supposed to pretend and believe that she's a progressive on MSNBC. Who are you guys kidding? And when I worked at MSNBC, whenever we covered foreign policy, they would make me stack the show with generals. <laughs> general on top of general on top of general because when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like nails. And the underlying reason for that is corruption. The money's got to get funneled to the defense contractors. That's why everything's got to seem like a military problem. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.